Longtime colleague, friend, and early investor Paul Holland, now a general partner and VC in residence at Mach 49. Paul, it is great to see you again. Happy Friday. Hey, Carl, good to see you again. I I'd love just your color on Hastings and, and this ability to pivot around business models, around advertising tiers, and now around succession. You know, co CEO roles uh, tend not to work in a lot of high profile cases, but that does not seem to be the case here. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I took a little bit of grief. I think it was 15 years ago, I was on uh, Motley Fool, and I, and I said, I think Reed Hastings is the best CEO in America. Um, and that was when the stock was at about a, about a billion dollars in market cap. Um, you know, Reed, Reed is just a very one-of-a-kind uh, human being and, and a one-of-a-kind leader. Uh, back in the day when I worked with him in the early days of Pure Software in the 90s, um, he, he just he was he was so studious and so like he, he must have read 200 business books during that time period and absorbed all the information in it and then has now applied it over the course of his whole career. So um, I, your previous guest, Alan, I think he nailed it. Uh, I think that, you know, everything Reed does is intentional. And for all of us who've been, you know, benefiting from it, both in terms of the content from Netflix, but also the stock. Uh, you know, he's just done an unbelievable job over a 35-year career. Right. They've, of course, always been focused um, on their own business. You ask them about competition. They always say, in the past, our competition is sleep. But at this point, given the traction that some large rivals are beginning to get together, um, don't you think external focus is, has to get stronger? Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know that I can I'm not close enough to the day to day at Netflix to 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 comment on on that aspect of it. I guess what I would say is, um, you know, if you go back to the early days and one of the things I recall from my time at Foundation Capital, where we were an early stage investor uh, through my partner, Mike Shu, is, um, you know, Reed used to do the quarterly analyst calls with the, you know, the Wall Street analyst. And they, they just hammered him every single time. Show me profit. Like, where's the profit? I want to see profit, profit, profit. And his response essentially was, you don't understand how large my market is. Um, that, you know, that I'm going to keep investing and investing and investing. And he did it, I think, quite consciously, knowing that there were going to be these huge competitors that eventually were going to wake up. Uh, for years and years, they just simply criticized, but they were going to, they were going to wake up. But recall, Carl, that even in the very early days, you know, we helped take Netflix public in 2003 and and right out of the gate, Amazon went after them. Walmart went after them. Blockbuster. Remember those guys like they went after them. Uh, Disney was looking at them, but not yet ready to kind of make any moves or whatever it might happen to be. You know, the greatest gift that all of those people did is they didn't take streaming seriously. They didn't resource the company for streaming and they were the incumbents. So it was very difficult for them to embrace the new business model. Ultimately, Netflix's wild success forced them into doing it. And so it's not a surprise that at some point they begin to take some share.